The next fallacy of failed induction is the so-called ad ignorantiam, which means appeal to ignorance in Latin. What is it? The fallacy of appeal to ignorance is committed by any argument whose premises attempt to support the conclusion that something is or isn't the case by appealing to the lack of evidence to the contrary. In other words, it asserts that a claim is true because it has not yet been proven to be false or that it is false because it hasn't yet been proven true. Here's an example. You can't prove ghosts don't exist, so ghosts exist. Or, you can't prove ghosts do exist, so ghosts don't exist. As you can see, these arguments use the absence of evidence to the contrary to prove their claims. Here's a video that contains several instances of the appeal to ignorance. Let's watch it. Now, by God, I'm talking specifically about a heavenly father who is conscious, he is aware of the past, present, and future. He created the universe with intent, meaning he actually decided to bring everything into existence out of nothing. He is omnipotent, he can do anything he wants, and he performs amazing miracles every day. Unfortunately, atheists can't prove that even one of these facts about God is false. Which must make all of them true, right? Seems pretty simple to me. An earthquake kills thousands of people, but a baby is found among the rubble. Or an abducted child returns home safe. Atheists prove that those aren't literally miracles of God resulting from people's prayers. Admit it, you can't. Simple folks want simple answers to big questions. The idea of a single invisible creature in the sky making everything happen with his magic just works for us. And the fact that we can't be proved wrong can mean only one thing. We must be right. Notice how the narrator attempts to prove his own claims by reference to the atheist's inability to disprove them. Since the atheist can't prove that they are false, they must be true. And that is the fallacy of ad ignorantiam. Here are the two variants of the appeal to ignorance. First case, since no one has shown that P is false, therefore P is true. Second case, since no one has shown that P is true, therefore P is false. These are simply the opposite sides of the same coin, as you can see. Here's a caveat. If scientists have repeatedly turned up no evidence in support of a claim, and the claim doesn't help explain anything, it is not a fallacy to reject the claim. Example. Werewolves probably don't exist because scientists have uncovered no plausible evidence for their existence, and their putative existence wouldn't help explain anything. Note that this might look like the odd ignorantium fallacy, since it's basically saying that X must be false, since you have no evidence for it being true. But, in this case, the concept has no explanatory value, and there has never been any scientific evidence that supports the existence of werewolves. So here's a note about the avoidance of this fallacy. Anytime an argument cites an absence of evidence as the principal ground for rejecting a claim, be suspicious. If that's all there is, and there is no countervailing evidence offered, then you may be in the realm of the ad ignorantium. Enough said.